Up next, we're talking about episode 22 of the 52 Weeks of Reefing. This one was called Reef Tank Lighting. What's on our tanks? It's the T5 Hybrid. Okay, T5 Hybrid. That was, right. uh, what was um, the first going on the 160 in that episode. I will tell you straight up, all of my most successful tanks have been a T5 LED Hybrid. Uh, end of story, yeah. right? And if you've been following along with all these episodes, you'll know why that is. You can connect all the dots, right? Uh, but here's the core belief in this one. I'm going to tell you today, it's just a hybrid. It isn't a T5 hybrid uh, or mm -hmm. LED hybrid or in the fa in fact, in the past, it was T5 uh, 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 halide yeah. hybrid, yeah. which was the gold standard, right? All right. So the core belief today in terms of hybrids is emulating the sky as the primary source of light, the sun and the caustic lines with a single light source has proven to be elusive. Yeah. Trying to do all of those things inside of one, one single light. form factor has proven to be elusive. Respect that nature has a hybrid mm. approach as well. So let me repeat that one more time. Emulating the sky, the sun, caustic lines with a single light source has proven to be elusive. Respect that even nature has a hybrid approach. Meaning- Sun bright single point source of light sky wide diffused fill light caustic lines shimmer yeah <laughs> i mean like little bright little uh, shimmer yeah. it looks beautiful yeah. and it is important and we're not just looking here for something that's going to grow coral we're looking for something that looks beautiful as well yeah exactly right yeah. all mm. right so what matters most in this case which is uh, in relation to hybrid uh, lighting and trying to find that elusive solution that manages all of it. Mm -hmm. This is where the intersection of biology and a visually powerful tank emerges. Yeah, we, in the Aquascape video that uh, we talked about, in the Aquascape episode we talked about a while ago, we said uh, Aquascape is for, your, uh, is for us, habitats for your fish, you can have both. Uh, same same conversation here. You know, is that uh, biology or intersection of biology, lighting for biology, so your pets, but visually visually powerful image that you're. That, that's the whole reason you brought this tank into your house in the first place. Why don't we, you look awesome? You, yeah, you can have both. Yes. Hmm. Okay. I know what matters most. Being larger than your object you're trying to illuminate. Yes. Horizon to horizon source of light. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking about this all day. Uh, it's horizon to horizon source of light, emulate nature. Uh, it has to incorporate that. It can be the cones of light of intersecting light. It can be a big sheet of light. It can be strips of light. It could be all kinds of different things, man. Uh, but. The overall goal. The goal should be to wrap the object in light. Mm. All right. <laughs> Next one. Uh, well, also what matters most is coupled with small, compact, intense light sources like the sun. Yeah. So the Kessels come to mind. The Prime comes to mind. Yeah. Even the Red Sea uh, yeah, reef, lead. reef lead yeah. comes to mind. Those things are a compact source of light. Uh, like the sun. Like the sun. Easily shadowed. High contrast. But man, they create a really nice shimmer because they all come out of one single source of light, mm. a small compact source. Yeah. So any one of those things, those things are what's going to add the visual appeal to the tank, as well as a little bit of strength uh, to the lighting uh, that fits into that puzzle as well. But we're trying to get the sun, the sky, and the caustic lines together. So historically, I would tell you that some T5s with some Kessels was the easiest way to achieve that. <laughs> I mean, you know, throw your T5s in there. Uh, you got to yeah. have a hood in many cases to do yeah. that, though. Yeah. Uh, or you could buy those uh, like pre-made kits. We started with the uh, three. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had the E170 was T5s and a Kessel in the center. Yeah, this one has always been Kessels and T5s. It just went from uh, Kessel 360s to Kessel 360Xs. Now we actually did some AP900s in the middle. Yeah, somewhere. we did AP900s. Yeah. Uh, uh, yep. Always that uh, is, a, is the hybrid solution, which is the intersection of biology with a visually powerful tank. Yeah, and I think the thought process was that uh, that T five was one of the you know one of the best at diffusing that sharp caustic line from the castle. You know, if you had castles on your on their own, 
really sharp, harsh, uh, caustic lines in the water. Uh, some people like that amount of shimmer, but sometimes it gets a little overpowering and you diffuse it. Uh, and that T5, you just like that teal blue color uh, from the ATI Blue Pluses, it really diffused that very well. So this was a really popular choice. The, the, when the hybrid conversation first came out, it was, uh, you know, T5 LED hybrids. So I don't, I think there was a little bit of a hammer solution, to be honest. Yeah. Like the problem was, is like, we were just weren't at the time having as much luck as we would like with some of the solutions we were using. And so, you know, everybody knows the T5s work. So let's just do the T5s and we'll accent them with the cool things, the features of uh, yeah, LEDs. Yeah. They get the color, we get the shimmer, we happy get all the accident. other things. And it's just kind of like a happy accident. Yeah. And that, and, but like part of it is we didn't understand what it was that the T5s were actually doing and why it was successful. Yep. Because yep. despite the contrary <laughs> belief here, uh, T5s do not produce magic photons. No. There aren't any magic photons inside that bulb that are somehow different than the LED Growing one. coral like, bell or better like, than any. If only like, you know, God himself came down and blessed the T5 bulb as the only solution for reef things. It never <laughs> happened, man, it's not true. Uh, it's just that there's wide angle fill light. Yeah. So wide angle fill, fill light from any source that creates that horizon to horizon uh, of well blended spectrum uh, will work. Uh, it's a reflector, it's an LED, it doesn't matter. It's not a magic photon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do the exact, you can do the, achieve the exact same thing that T5s were doing when, when hybridizing them with LEDs with other LEDs. So uh, if I had to do this, there would be a couple of different ways now. I could do it with LED strips. I'd either diffuse the LED strips or I'd probably use LED strips that were largely uh, just one color, not like 15 different colors right. in there. Right, right. I'd use it just like largely just the blue spectrums and I'd use uh, the you know sunlights to tune in the color that I'm looking, the wide angle yep. spotlights. Mm -hmm. uh, but more likely what I'd probably do at this point is use big wide angle diffused lights like the Radeon XR30 or the skylight that's all diffused creates that big wide angle light that coats the tank in even light and then use uh, uh, like a, the you know red Little, sea light, yeah. the, the reef lead, the Kessel, the AI prime to add in the shimmer in yeah. there as well. All right, most of your you know, most of your par and coverage isn't coming from those single point source of uh, like sunlight repl replicators. It's the sky. Same thing in nature. Yeah, and so and then instead of thinking about it as like a couple of LED strips on the outer edges, what I got is these big wide angle panels that are from the sky or like medium sized uh, uh, XR thirties in there. Uh, and you could go 15s as well. Uh, but you know these things are coating the, the light uh, and space them right to be able to do it. And then in between them is a, a couple of uh, high points of light that will create the shimmer that I'm mm. looking for. Because it's, it's that piece that we talked about. The sky, the sun, the caustic lines from a single light source has proven elusive. Like once you uh, try to you know, make a blended cohesive spectrum uh, from a big form factor, how do I then incorporate within the Single same points. light yeah. to the shimmer things? So that is proven elusive within the same light. So that's why, you know, probably the most advanced end of this, you know, the people that are really, really into reefing, yeah. and, you know, this is the nerdiest end of this thing, which is, this is where the intersection of biology and a visually powerful tank emerges. Yeah. This is when we decide to apply everything we know to get the coolest looking thing possible that also cares for the animals. Mm. Yes. All right. Uh, well, I also believe what matters most when it comes to hybrid lighting is that LED light bars can be even wider and lower maintenance than uh, the T5s. Uh, mm. So T5s of the world, uh, reflectors, and uh, those reflectors, depending on kind of like the shape, will give you like how how uh, wide of spread those things have. We tested a couple uh, T5 bulbs versus a couple LED strips and found, you know, like 24 inches and 40, like 36 inch ones, and found that the LED strips actually uh, spread more evenly and put out uh, like 20 or 30 more part. The ones that we tested, by the way, were the Reef Brights, which yeah. don't use lenses. 
right? uh, other than the lens of the LED itself, and they One put color. it inside of a reflector. Yeah, exactly. Inside of that strip. The, the XHOs. Yeah, and so that's why it's so wide. It's a really wide angle lens on the LED itself, then hitting the reflector, and it puts out a really wide angle light that blankets whatever underneath it in light. It's super long, it's big, uh, mm. and it is the right solution. Now, you look at not all LED strips will be the same. You know, because you can go look at LED strips and then inside of it is a whole bunch of little focused lenses. Yeah. You know, the ones with all the little focused lenses in there and no reflector, uh, they're probably not going to produce as wide of an angle or they won't be able to replicate uh, the T5 and reflector anywhere near as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, we also believe matters most is that a wide angle module like the Radions is likely the best. We said the Radeon's meant it quite a few times in this thing, and the reason by for it is because they're setting the standard. It was a complete form factor change from Gen 4 to Gen 5. I mean, Gen 4 had single pucks. Each uh, LED on, in each puck had its own, uh, you know, HEX, or I forget what the term was, for the, its own lens. So every single one of them had their own lens, meaning that each beam was focused individually. And the complete change in form factor was now the Gen 5s that uh, no lenses or hardly a lens, a frosted kind of uh, bottom to them without, a without the diffuser on there. And it creates this, the, they were spaced even further apart over this, you know, 12, uh, 12 inch or 13 inch by, uh, by 8 inch area. And now you get more than 180 degrees of beam angle coming off of that light. Yeah, I, it's... <sighs> That is the standard, is if you can disperse light that evenly over the area without the hot spot in the middle, you're beating the technology artifacts. And that is what the thought leaders do in mm -hmm. any industry, right? Mm -hmm. So you have challenges of the technology used and then you beat them and they're beating them. So that is why I, I think that they keep coming up in the conversation. The fact that they happen to do it for one of the lowest cost per par, uh, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I can't, well, I want to say it, man. The fact that they can do it amongst the cheapest when you consider how many you need to use to achieve the same effect. It's not mm. that like one module of something uh, over another will be, uh, more expensive because obviously a four hundred dollar light is more expensive than a two hundred dollar right. light. No, it's if I want to achieve the same net result in the tank, being the same end to end horizon coverage bouncing out the glass. Yeah. I want the same technology. Yeah. I want the same mm -hmm. uh, 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 mounting option. Well, all the things that that, that comes with. And how does that cost compare uh, to the application? The fact that it's the clo the lowest cost per par measured at 108 points throughout the tank, you know, at, at least in the top like three, mm. uh, how can that be? It means that I'm achieving the, the goal I'm after at a lower price because uh, this is doing it so effectively. Kind of reminds me of like the Kirkland value matrix of more, better, less. <laughs> uh, but it, like, you know, more, better, less, and like sometimes I go and I buy uh, like a $10 bottle of wine from them, yeah. right? Uh, and in, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. And sometimes I buy the twenty dollar one, just like a little signature blend. You, that one's awesome. Yeah. Right? Uh, but and they said I watched some video and it's like they go and buy like Grand Cru grapes that otherwise would be a hundred dollars somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. It's the value matrix, and you know some people twenty dollars is too much for a bottle of wine. Some dollars are ten. But if you spent the ten, the twenty man, the value matrix is super duper mm. high. It feels and, like you're getting the hundred, two hundred dollars. Price bottle. per par, probably the best matrix yeah. of that whole thing. Mm. Uh, all right. So uh, what matters most also is the big panels, like the skies. Obviously, you don't. We don't have to operate the same way of it's on the sides. Yeah. We actually cover the whole tank and then put the shimmer in the middle, yeah. uh, in between the panels. As we continue, uh, as we continue down the future of like the reef tank lighting and the LEDs, you're going to find a couple of uh, you're going to find different form factor options uh, that fit you. Metal halides in a two foot by two foot or eighteen by eighteen versus T fives that are forty eight by it's, uh, four bulb, six bulb, and eight bulb. Uh, we'll we'll continue to have options like the the ray on that is this small of a form factor that spreads uh, the light out so well versus a uh, the sky which is like this form factor that does uh, that does the same thing or if not something uniquely different in that I maybe I only need two of these instead of three of those or what have you mm-hmm right. 
All right, so reef tank lighting hybrids, hard lessons. There still are some hard lessons here. Uh, the first one I would tell you is cords. Uh, the nature of hybridizing yeah. solutions is uh, you end up with a lot of cords. Like my first hybrid in the 360 was six different uh, uh, reef brights. Oh, six different, yeah. yeah. And then I think I had four Kessels in there. And I think the reef bright uh, had, you know, those two, XHOs had two cords per strip. Because they were controllable, so I had controller six, boxes. 12 cords. I, do, I counted it up and it was like 30 some cords to make this <laughs> operation, it's insane. Uh, so uh, hard lessons is in many cases, you'll have a lot of cords in the here. hybrid. Yeah. A, and by the way, the hybrid solution that like is readily available to everybody is definitely the aquatic lights, the aquatic lights yeah. and the reef brights now where you can just drop in whatever light you want in the center. And they have that now LED strips on the side, meaning you don't have to get rid of those hazardous bulbs anymore or buy bulbs yeah. or worry about them anymore. Uh, and so for the average person, you just want to take a lot of what we're taking today, just the aquatic life and then put your favorite LED in the middle uh, is often a really <laughs> simple solution. Worked for the U-170. The one I think comes to mind though is there's extra cords there for sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, another hard lesson. Uh, hard lesson, uh, and we learned this in the flow episode and we're learning it here too, is that brand affinity doesn't matter. I mean, we should stop this argument about you know, Kessels versus Radions versus Skies versus Primes versus Hydras, all these, you know, all these different, uh, you know, uh, I like this brand over any other brand because uh, in the end, you actually some of the best options for creating this hybridized lighting comes from multiple uh, different types of brands, multiple brands. And your 360 is right now Skies and Kessels, mm -hmm. achieving what you're looking for. And the question is, what you, what's your goal? I mean, it goes to the beginning of the whole LED or the whole lighting question is like, what is your goal? And my goal is horizon to horizon lighting that wraps the objects in light and then adds a shimmer in a cohesive manner without visual artifacts. You well, never, you never said a brand in that statement. No, I didn't say a single brand in any of that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's about what my goal is, and then I go use the tools to achieve that goal. Hundred uh, percent. All right. So uh, another hard lesson is uh, uh, the best sky or fill light. Uh, a horizon to horizon light will be diffused and blended. So if you choose options that uh, aren't diffused or aren't blended, it won't soften the, the sunlight the mm. same way. It will have some artifacts of lighting. So uh, the best options will again be like any option that has a diffuser on it uh, that blends all the spectrums together. Uh, I think it's a hard lesson because I will be honest, man, when I added the, the reef brights there, uh, six of them, it did kind of give the tank a little bit of a fuzz uh, you yeah. know, to it. Yeah. So I'm much happier with this guy uh, solution that's on there now. Well, I mean, T5s were the best at the diffusing portion. Uh, and uh, when it comes to blending, I'd probably, you know, in technologies of old, not talking LED now, uh, uh, metal halides probably did the blending uh, the best because there was only one light, only one light bulb. So the color you got out of it was the color you got out of it. That was it. Mm -hmm. and, oh. It just is a way. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But those worked really, really well at this. Uh. So, so the last hard lesson that I'm going uh, to say here mm -hmm. is don't overthink it. Yeah. Don't overthink it. Don't like, you know, pursuit of perfection because you'll probably never find it. Think of the options. And I'm going to say that thing again, man. Uh, the pursuit of perfection for me Horizon to horizon light, wraps the corals, wraps the whole uh, aquascape in light, provides visually peering uh, shimmer with as few artifacts of lighting as, as possible. And, and just uh, we just gave you a whole bunch of options to do it. You don't have to overthink it. So, uh, you know, go to town and build it. <laughs> so what's next?